uh, in the previous lecture uh, we were uh, trying to prove the Picard's uh, existence and uniqueness theorem and the proof uh, was divided into four parts and we proved part A and part B. So, let me just recall the Picard's uh, existence and uniqueness theorem. Uh, let uh, D be a domain in R2 and uh, F is a function from D to R a real valued function satisfying the following conditions. F is uh, continuous on D and F x y is Lipschitz continuous with respect to y with a Lipschitz constant alpha greater than 0 and uh, x 0 y 0 the initial point of the initial value problem that is assumed to be an interior point in the domain D and we take two constants A greater than 0 B greater than 0 such that uh, the rectangle defined by this is uh, fully inside the domain D and we use a notation m is a maximum value of f in the rectangle which is attained because f is continuous and h is the minimum of a and b by a. Then the, then the Picard's theorem is that the initial value problem has a unique solution in the interval x minus x 0 is less than or equal to h. And the main idea in the Picard's theorem is uh, we defined uh, what is known as a Picard's uh, iterative scheme the iterands we defined the Picard's uh, iterands by phi n is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t phi n minus 1 t dt and varies from 1 to n is 1 2 3 etcetera. So, we get a sequence of functions the main idea of the proof is we prove that this sequence of functions converges uniformly to a function phi in the interval x 0 uh, x 0 plus h and then we show that that limit function is a solution to the initial value problem and by uniqueness theorem which we have already proved where we used a Lipschitz condition uh, the solution is unique the limit function is a solution and the solution is unique. So, uh, we divided the proof into four parts the first uh, part is we sh have shown that phi n defined by the iterative scheme is well defined and uh, uh, phi n is a sequence of continuous uh, functions having continuous derivatives and uh, phi n x for every n is inside the rectangle R. And in part b we found that the sequence of function phi n that satisfies an estimate phi n x minus phi n minus 1 x uh, the absolute value of it is less than or equal to m by alpha into alpha h to the power n by n factorial for n going from 1 2 3 etcetera. And this happens on the interval x 0 x 0 plus h. Now, today we will prove part c and uh, part d. So, part c what we want to prove is as n goes to infinity we will prove that the sequence of function uh, phi n that converges uniformly to a function phi on the interval x 0 x 0 plus h. And part d we will show that the limit function phi which is a limit of the sequence of function phi n that is nothing but the solution of the given initial value problem on the interval x 0 x 0 plus h. So, let us start with uh, the proof of C. 
So proof part C. So in C we want to prove that phi n converges, the second phi n converges. uniformly to some function phi on the interval x0, x0 plus h. And from uh, note that from part b we got an estimate for phi n from part b we got the inequality so part b we got the inequality phi n x minus phi n minus 1 x the absolute value of this is less than or equal to m by alpha times alpha h to the power n by n factorial. Now, we consider the series of uh, positive constants. So, the right hand side if you look at the right hand side and make a series of uh, positive constants by using the right hand side the series of positive constants on the RHS. So, that is this series m by alpha alpha h to the power n by n factorial as n goes from 1 to infinity. So, which is m by alpha times alpha h by 1 factorial plus alpha h square by 2 factorial plus etcetera. So, this converges converges to m by alpha times e to the power alpha h minus 1. See uh, in this series this series if you add 1 and if you subtract at 1. So, this summation is e to the power alpha h and subtract 1 you get uh, m by alpha times uh, e to the power alpha h. So, this converges the right hand side term uh, as a series that converges to this quantity. Now, we will consider the infinite uh, series, the infinite series. So, consider the infinite series summation n goes to 1 to infinity phi n x minus phi n minus 1 x so this series we are discussing the convergence of this series and what is the limit of this series 
So, each term of the series is bounded by a positive constant which we got in we proved in part b. So, now by Weierstrass m test. So, each series each stem phi n x minus phi n minus 1 x this is less than or equal to m by alpha which we proved in part b to the power n by n factorial. And uh, since this seri the series formed by the right hand side m by alpha alpha h to the power n by n factorial converges. We now invoke the Weierstrass m test which we discussed in the preliminaries by Weierstrass m test the series n is equal to 1 to infinity phi n x minus phi n minus 1 x this converges and it converges uniformly on the interval of the interval which we are concerned about is x 0 x 0 plus h it converges on this. Now, if this series infinite series converges what is the limit of it to what it is converging for that let us consider the partial sequence of partial sum. So, consider the sequence of partial sum of the above series so call it sn snx is the end partial sum uh, plus if you add y0 to it so y0 plus the partial sum n goes from 1 to uh, say i goes to 1 to n i goes from 1 to n phi i x minus phi i minus 1 x so just uh, if you expand the so plus uh, terms and minus terms they cancel each other and this becomes by definition this is your phi n x which is defined by the Picard's uh, iterative scheme. So, phi n x is the partial sum of the infinite series. And since uh, uh, infinite series converges uniformly to uh, on this interval we'll say the partial sum x n x which is phi n x that converges the sequence of partial sums So, if you suppress x this converges uniformly to a limit function say phi on the interval x 0 
x 0 plus h. So, therefore, this implies that the sequence of functions phi n defined by the Picard's iterative scheme converges uniformly to phi on the desired interval x0, x0 plus h. And also from part uh, from part A, which we have proved, each phi n is continuous. Each phi n, uh, each phi n is continuous on x zero, x zero plus h. So, therefore, the sequence of functions converges uniformly to phi and each phi n is con uh, continuous. So, therefore, we can invoke uh, the theorem which we discussed in the preliminaries to conclude that the limit function phi itself is continuous. So, from part A each phi n is continuous on uh, and hence the limit function phi itself is continuous. on x0, x0 plus h. So, in conclusion, so the four we have, so conclusion is the sequence phi n converges to phi on x0, x0 plus h and phi is an element of the set of all continuous functions defined on x0, x0 plus h. Okay, now, we will prove the next uh, section that is part D proof of part D. There we will show that this limit function phi, which we just got as a limit of the uh, sequence of functions defined by the it Picard's iterative scheme, is a solution to the initial value problem. So, to prove to prove that the limit function phi satisfies the initial value problem. Okay, since each uh, since each phi n x satisfies the estimate phi n x 
minus y0 is less than or equal to b on the interval x0 x0 plus h which we have proved in part a. Since each uh, phi n x is inside the rectangle r or r1. So, we get phi x minus y 0 is less than or equal to b on x 0 x 0 plus h. So, this sequence phi n converges uniformly to phi on the interval. So, the for the limiting function phi x satisfies phi x minus y 0 is less than or equal to b on this interval. And uh, we also have the convergence phi n to phi that is a uniform convergence. So, this converges uniformly on the interval x 0 x 0 plus h we will prove that the function f x phi n x this converges uniformly to f x phi x. So, uniformly on x 0 x 0 plus h. So, how this is done? So, uh, we have already proved that phi n converges to phi uniformly on x 0 x 0 plus h and by using that and f is uh, given to be continuous and f is uh, having nice properties Lipschitz continuity and continuity with respect to x and Lipschitz continuity with respect to phi. So, therefore, if we find f of x phi and x minus f of x phi x which is a limit function. So, this uh, is less than or equal to by using the Lipschitz continuity of f with respect to the second argument it is alpha times phi n x minus phi x. So, uni uniform convergence of phi implies uniform convergence of phi n implies that for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta uh, there exists uh, a positive number n and that n depends upon epsilon only such that uh, n positive such that phi n x minus phi x this difference is less than epsilon uh, for all n greater than n epsilon. So, you can take uh, this epsilon by alpha also uh, another epsilon. just to get epsilon at the end. Okay, so, therefore, we find the estimate 
f of x phi n x minus f of x phi x which is less than or equal to alpha times phi n x minus phi x and uniform convergence of phi n okay, implies that whenever x is uh, for all n small n larger than the capital N this can be made less than epsilon by uh, epsilon by alpha. So, this is less than equal to alpha times epsilon by alpha which is epsilon for all n greater than capital N which is a function of epsilon. So, for a given epsilon greater than 0 we could prove that there exists an n such that f of x phi n minus f of x phi x this difference uh, the absolute value of the difference is made less than epsilon for all n greater than n of epsilon. So, this shows that f x phi n x converges to f x phi x uniformly. on x 0 x 0 plus h. Now, now since uh, f of x phi n x is continuous for each n for each n uh, so this is a continuous for each and on the interval x0 x0 plus h the limit function the limit function f t phi t phi f t uh, function f x phi x is also continuous on x 0 x 0 plus h. The convergence is uniform and for each n uh, in the sequence each term of the sequence is continuous and the sequence converges uniformly. So, therefore, the limit function is also continuous follows from the theorem we discussed in the preliminaries. So, therefore, phi of x is equal to limit of n goes to infinity phi n x which is equal to by definition phi n is y 0 plus limit n goes to infinity integral x 0 to x f of t phi n t dt. Now, we invoke uh, a theorem three that we did in the preliminaries on uh, the interchange of limit and integration of sequence of functions. So, since the convergence is uniform and each term uh, f of t phi and x uh, phi and t is continuous we can interchange this limit and the integration. So, this is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to take the limit inside limit n goes to infinity f of t phi n t dt. Now, limit n goes to infinity f t phi n t is your phi uh, f of t phi. So, therefore, this is equal to y 0 
plus integral x0 to x f of t phi t dt. So, your left hand side is phi, phi of x. So, therefore, the limit function takes the form phi x is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t phi t dt. Now, if you recall, so therefore, uh, phi of x is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t phi of t dt it is a limit function of the sequence phi n which is the sequence obtained from the Picard's iterative scheme. Now, if you invoke from the basic lemma basic lemma any function satisfying this integral equation. So, any function satisfying the integral equation has to satisfy the initial value problem. The function phi satisfies initial value problem. So, therefore, the Picard citrons converges uniformly to the solution of the initial value problem and this solution is unique that uniqueness follows from the uniqueness theorem which we proved. So, this proves the existence of a solution to the IVP. Now, uniqueness for uniqueness what we require is the Lipschitz continuity which is already assumed in the theorem. So, now the uniqueness of solution follows from the uniqueness theorem proved earlier. So, this uh, completes the proof of Picard's existence and uh, uniqueness theorem. And uh, a few things to remark. Although Lipschitz continuity was used in the above theorem to establish the existence result, it is possible to establish existence uh, theorem just by assuming only continuity assumptions on F. However, to establish uniqueness of solution, one need to use condition like Lipschitz con continuity with of F with respect to Y or some other condition weaker or stronger conditions. So, for existence of solution to the initial value problem, let us recall dy by dx is equal to f of x y 
y at x0 is y0. For the for existence of solution to the initial value problem, only continuity condition only continuity condition on f is sufficient only continuity condition is uh, is I mean is necessary only continuity condition is needed but for uniqueness we need stronger condition than continuity. Say for example, lifted side for example, Lipschitz condition. And um, one can also use a uh, weak version of Lipschitz type condition to ensure the uniqueness. So, if we ok that is a remark 1. So, remark 2 a weaker version a weaker version of Lipschitz type condition say it is uh, something like f of x y 1 minus f of x y 2 is less than or equal to some constant alpha times y 1 minus y 2 this is a Lipschitz condition, but this is replaced by times uh, ln of 1 by y 1 minus y 2. This is a weaker condition than the Lipschitz condition for all x y 1 and x y 2 on the domain or the rectangle. A weaker version of Lipschitz condition is sufficient to ensure uniqueness ensure uniqueness of solution to the initial value problem. But still, uh, continuity condition is enough to prove the existence. Now, we look into the piano, Cauchy piano theorem on existence of solution that requires only continuity condition on the no function f. So, now we look into the Cauchy piano Cauchy piano existence theorem. We state and prove Cauchy piano existence theorem for uh, the initial value problem, where the function f is continuous on a domain D 
continuous on a domain D in R2, but not Lipschitz continuous with respect to the uh, second argument that is Y. To prove the existence theorem, we first define what is called an uh, epsilon approximation to solution uh, for the initial value problem. And uh, just by using continuity on F, subsequently we define a sequence of approximate solutions. We define a sequence of approximate solutions for the initial value problem. And uh, we show that this sequence of appro uh, epsilon ap approximate solution that is uniformly bounded and equicontinuous. So, once we have a uniformly bounded and equicontinuous sequence of functions, we make use of Arzelas Coley theorem to extract a sub sequence of the sequence that converges uniformly to a function. And uh, later we prove that that limit function is a solution to the initial value problem. That is all uh, idea of Cauchy P, uh, piano existence theorem. Cauchy piano existence theorem we first define what is known as an epsilon uh, epsilon approximate solution to the initial value problem. So, definition is called a epsilon approximate solution epsilon approximate solution so consider the initial value problem which is d y by d x equal to f of x y with initial condition y at x 0 is y 0 this is the initial value problem where the function f x y is a real function real valued function defined on a domain call it D in R2. An epsilon approximate solution, an epsilon approximate solution of an, appro an epsilon approximate solution of the initial value problem IVP on an interval uh, call it I which is uh, <coughs> set of 4 x such that absolute value of x minus x 0 is less than equal to A. So, is a function the approximate solution approximate epsilon approximate solution is a function ok call it phi uh, defined on i such that the following properties are satisfied first x for every x in the interval i is in the given domain d x on i. Second property, so phi is C1 class thus on i this is one time continuously differentiable phi is phi has um, 
continuous first derivative except possibly for a finite set call it S of points. on i where the derivative phi prime may have finite discontinuity or simple discontinuity have simple discontinuity means a kind of jump discontinuity and third condition for approximate uh, solution is the difference between phi prime minus f of x phi x phi prime minus f of x phi x is less than epsilon for all x in the interval i except for the points on the finite set S. So, for a given initial value problem, initial value problem, we define an up epsilon approximate solution. So, phi is said to be a function phi is said to be a function phi on an interval i given by x minus x is less than equal to a is said to be an approximate solution epsilon approximate solution if for these properties x phi x is in the domain and phi is continuously differentiable except uh, um, on a set of uh, a finite number of points and uh, the difference between phi prime and f of x phi x this is a difference the error this is made smaller than epsilon on the interval i minus s. So, what we do now is we will prove that under continuity assumption on f just uh, by continuity assumption on f with respect to both x and y there exists epsilon approximate solution to this initial value problem. Okay, so, we prove the following theorem and one note is so, the solution phi or any function phi which is an element of C i continuous functions defined on the interval i satisfying the uh, satisfying the second property which we just have seen uh, the property 2 this property that is phi is in C 1 on i except possibly for a finite set S of points on i where phi prime may have simple discontinuity. So, if uh, a, any function satisfying the second property phi is uh, said to be is said to have piecewise piecewise continuous to have piecewise continuous derivatives on the interval i and uh, is denoted by and is denoted by phi is in the set the class c 1 p i a class of functions having 
piecewise continuous derivatives. Okay. So, we state the theorem. So, theorem 1. So, this theorem uh, in this theorem we prove that under continuity assumptions on uh, f with respect to x and y there exist epsilon approximate solutions to the initial value product. Okay. Consider consider the initial value problem d y by d x is equal to f of x y with initial condition y at x 0 is y 0. So, initial value problem. Suppose that f of x y is continuous is continuous on the rectangle continuous on the rectangle are given by R is set of four point x y such that x minus x minus x zero is less than or equal to a and y minus y zero is less than or equal to b and I let m be a constant m is equal to maximum of the function f of x y maximum of the function m and x y lies on r and h is a constant defined by h is a constant defined by minimum of a b by m. So, then the conclusion of the theorem is then given epsilon greater than 0 then given epsilon greater than 0 there exist epsilon approximate epsilon approximate solution to the initial value problem. on the interval x minus x 0 less than or equal to h. Theorem does not say anything about the uniqueness. Theorem says that there exists an epsilon approximate solution to the initial value problem under the continuity assumption on f. And the constant m since f is continuous on the rectangle, rectangle is a closed uh, set inside R2. So, therefore, bounded and closed uh, compact set and uh, the maximum is attained. This uh, m is defined and h is the minimum of a and b by m depends upon the value of m. So, we will prove this theorem. The whole idea of this theorem, the proof of the theorem, proof so we take, okay, let 
epsilon greater than 0 be given then so this is our x y plane and this is a rectangle and say this is a point x 0 y 0 x 0 y 0 and uh, say this line is x is equal to x 0 plus uh, a and if h is smaller than a this is x is equal to x 0 plus h and we divide the interval x 0 to x 0 plus h into n, pa n parts. So, the first point is x 0, x 0, y 0, then x 1, x 2, x 3, etcetera. Then we define approximate solution starting from x 0, y 0. Okay, we will, uh, we will uh, approximate the solution by straight lines. The idea is starting from x 0, at x 0 I know what is the slope of the solution. Slope of the solution is f of x 0 y 0. I make a straight line. Then from that, that straight line meets the line x is equal to x 1 at some point. From there I again find the slope and I make uh, line segments and join the line segments to get a polygon and that polygon is an approximate solution as a dif uh, the mesh the difference of x i and x i plus 1 is very small then the uh, difference of the actual solution and the approximate solution can be made small. Okay, we will do the details of the proof in the next uh, lecture. Okay, thank you.